ISO 27001 Annex A 5.22, monitor review and change management of supplier services. I cannot express to you how easy this is, right? This is easy, this is straightforward. What is this? This is saying have a supplier management process. We've covered that in the previous tutorials. It's saying have legal agreements in place with them. And then it gave you a list of things that you need to do, which included reviewing and monitoring them and managing change, right? So this control is just making sure that you've done that. You're gonna have legal agreements in place with them that set out what it is that they do, what it is that you do. And when it comes to the audit, the audit is gonna check it and make sure that you were reviewing it, that you had some kind of a review on an ongoing basis to assess it. Uh, and that you had some processes if changes were required or if things went wrong, right? Nothing hard in here at all. If you're lucky enough to have a third party supplier manager or a supplier management team, they're gonna be covering it for you. Uh, if you don't, it's very, very easy to put in. When it comes to the review, the review of uh, suppliers you can do in a number of different ways, right? Automated dashboards, one-to-ones, it gives you guidance on it. You know, if you've got a relationship manager, then you can meet that relationship manager. If they produce reports, keep copies of those reports. If you've got a digital dashboard, log into the dashboard and assess against it. It's gonna be what's right for you. It's gonna be different per supplier. It's gonna be based on what the supplier does for you, the criticality they are, the assurances that you've got. But the bare minimum is we have a contract in place. We've set out what our requirements are. We now need to monitor that those requirements are being met and we need to manage the change if something goes wrong. It's not that hard, right? The definition is the organization should regularly monitor, review, evaluate and manage change in supplier information security practices and service delivery. Right, so nice and easy, right? We've got some kind of a review, some kind of a monitor in place. There are some other belts and braces that are gonna come out, come in here. When we do our uh, third party supplier review, we're gonna do a legal review on an annual basis. So we, annually, we're gonna be checking that we've got certificates that cover the products and services that we have purchased, um, that those certificates are you know, industry acceptable information security certificates and that they're in date. So we're gonna be getting some assurances and we're gonna be checking our contracts at least annually to make sure that those contracts are in date. And then potentially, ideally, my, my advice is use your legal team, your legal counsel, right, to manage any contractual changes that are required between you and them. Our third party supplier management process is gonna have processes in place for when things go wrong. So when it comes to the audit, if something has gone wrong, evidence that you followed the process that you have written down uh, and the outcomes of it, you know, and, and document every stage that's within that. So it's just a case of proving uh, that you responded to it. If you've made a change to the contract, same thing, keep evidences of that, prove that and show that and where reports are generated and meetings held, keep copies of those meetings, keep copies of those reports and show that you met and show that you reviewed that report and you're gonna be absolutely golden, right? It comes under supplier management, so we're gonna have a topic specific policy, we're gonna have that supplier management process, you know, we're gonna have that supplier register that manages all of that for us. We're gonna have those agreements in place and we're gonna have those certificates and those assurances and we're gonna monitor those suppliers. Monitoring is gonna be based on risk. So if you say you monitor them annually uh, and you've got the documentation in place, you know, potentially it's on your risk register and you accept the risk of that, that's gonna be absolutely fine. Um, so use your common sense, right? Use your common sense when it comes to how you're gonna review, monitor, uh, and assess the suppliers going forward. What the audit is gonna check is that you've got those agreements in place, that you've got your supplier register. They're gonna be checking, as I've just said, the processes that they're making sure that they've operated. And the mistakes that people make is you just don't monitor your suppliers. Now, again, you have to uh, on an annual basis for contracts and for certificates. Um, and then each individual department may, may have operational meetings and operational reviews. But the biggest mistake we see is you just don't do it. You know do it and you're gonna be absolutely fine. Um, and you've got no assurances that people are doing the right thing, right? Again, that's where we're coming to rely on our industry-wide certificates. So this is a really easy one uh, for you to put in place, either through a supplier manager or for you to do uh, in principle. Your key takeaways are, you've got some uh, kind of an agreement with this supplier, make sure you're checking it, monitoring it and reviewing it respond to incidents, respond to change, and use your legal team where required to make changes to contracts if it is applicable. My name is Stuart Barker. I am still the ISO 27001 Ninja, and we continue our journey through the Annex A. Uh, until the next tutorial, 